rotation. You'll notice that there is a vein that becomes much larger. So collapse the vein, and by externally rotate, you cannot expand the vein. The vein cannot expand it. If you have a ganglion, patients with ganglion can have a fluid collection. If you change from internal to external rotation, the ganglion is not going to change any shape. It's only the vein that is going to pop up. You see the little vein come up. But the ganglion does not change shape. Now, one of the most important things in examining the shoulder is looking at the supraspinatus tendon. The supraspinatus tendon is best examined as it shown if you zoom out a bit too. Uh, it can be done two ways, either by having the arm put on the back of the patient. You just sit a little in the front of this, on the chair. Yeah. So this would be a full internal rotation. You turn your body a bit. Okay. Very important is that the shoulder is not adductive, but as much adductive as possible. And one of the reasons for that is seeing more of the supraspinatus tendon. Now, I look for the supraspinatus between the acromion process here on one side and the corticoid process. That's my axis of my, my window to the supraspinatus tendon. Now, on the right side of the screen is the corticoid process. And with that internal rotation, you notice only a little bit of the biceps that is showing in the corner of the image. Of the image. You notice there is no groove for the biceps because you are in the intracapsular bicep tendon. Now, counting from this bicep tendon, there is about 1.5 to 2 centimeters of supraspinatus tendon. In scanning that supraspinatus, you start up high against the corpocromial ligament, you can see on the top, and you move down the transducer, <coughs> try to stay nice and parallel. This is, you can see the cartilage over the humeral head is that anechoic tissue layer, and then you move down towards the base and the attachment of the supraspinatus tendon. Look at that same tissue on the longitudinal axis, and first move your transducer close to the biceps, and you notice the anatomy of the humerus with the humeral head is the round surface, then you get the little groove is the anatomic neck of the humerus, and then the greater tuberosity of the footprint of the supraspinatus is that long surface, long flat surface. So you make a sweep, and as you're doing so, you keep your transducer perpendicular to the surface of the greater tuberosity. It's very important. Now, in terms of judging the tissues, you should, on a good transducer, and high frequency transducer as this is, you should see the interface between the tendon and the bursa very nicely. The tendon surface, and then the bursa is that thin, hypoechoic stripe. Now, that bursa normally is not thicker, is never thicker than the cartilage over the humeral head. So, the cartilage over the humeral head is thicker than the bursal tissue over the supraspinatus tendon. That's a good internal landmark. Now keep your transducer perpendicular and then slide, make that two centimeter movement around the acromion while you're keeping the transducer perpendicular to the surface. That is very critical. Now we'll change the position of it and having Federico turn to this left side, showing, and maybe if you zoom out a bit, so this is the kind of the internally rotated view with the arm adductive. Now we'll use the press maneuver, or the middle maneuver, and have the uh, patient put the arm on the back pocket, and we'll bring the arm in extension. So we went from this, we went from this internal rotation view, now we grab the hand of the back pocket, and we did swing the arm backwards. Just zoom out a bit more. Good. Now if you turn towards me, here we go. Good. So you notice the arm is, is pointing away from us. We find the, what this allows us, 
shows us a little bit more space around the intracapsular biceps. So the intracapsular biceps is the structure that you see right over the internal head. You're out of the rotator cuff interval. Are you into the rotator cuff interval? There's the space between the subscap, subscap varus seen on the right side, under the coracoid, and the supraspinatus stem. So in that space, you have two important ligamentous structures, the coracohumeral ligament on top of the bicep tendon, and on the, the middle glenohumeral, which is a sling on the bottom of the bicep, the bicep group. On the top of the bicep group. That sling keeps the biceps in the rotator cuff uh, interval and within the bicep group stable. Now, lateral to that point is again the supraspinatus tendon. You're high up, you scan up to the acromion, and then you scan down again, keeping your transducer perpendicular. Now, if you ask what is the most important portion of the, of the rotator cuff, now, if you look longitudinally, you change to the longitudinal orientation, so I'm scanning the supraspinatus longitudinally. Most of the pairs are going to be over the critical zone, which is about over the anatomic neck of the humerus. It's a very important, about a centimeter from the bicep tendon. So again, you make the sweep until you see the bicep tendon intercapsular, which is this portion of the bicep tendon. Now you're in the rotator cuff interval, and now you sweep about a centimeter lateral to that point. That's where you see most of the rotator cuff tendon, very close to the tuberosity. There's one last thing we always check on every shoulder. If you look at the back of Federico's shoulder, we show you just by palpation and feel the spine of the scapula and runs from medial inferior to lateral superior. So we showed you before the uh, infraspinatus tendon below the spine of the scapula. That's the infraspinatus tendon. Now if I scan on top of the, and above, and above, the, above that spine, let's just look at the spine of the scapula. Just zoom out a bit more, please. So this is the spine that both, both crowns are to see. Now over the spine must be the supraspinous fossa. Now we'll look at that fossa, and it only shows this muscle. So why do we look here? at the end of every single study, especially in young patients. We look in that space because in some patients that are very active, if patients are very active, you can actually get a ganglion assist just next to the superior labrum. So lateral is on the right side and meter is on the left side. You only see a little bit of the top of the humerus because there's a shadow coming from the acromion. It's very important that somebody is a weightlifter or a volleyball player to look for a ganglion because some ganglia are so small that they will only show over the suprascapular nerve if you look from the top of the shoulder that may not necessarily show if you look from the bottom. Thank you, Federico. It's very important that most, that most studies of the shoulder are about 15 minutes to 20 minutes for doing a complete exam. Sorry? Back to you.